If you've got any skin condition, any skin condition, then it's probably linked to the gut, whether it's 5% or 95%. And that covers all of the, the big issues like uh, dermatitis, atopic dermatitis, rosacea, uh, acne, it doesn't matter. Every time I look at more and more of the research, it shows that it's linked directly and indirectly to the gut. So the great thing about that is it gives us all a place to start. So if we want to fix our skin up and you want to make it more beautiful, even flexible, get rid of the aging phenomena happening on your skin, then start with the gut, the simplest strategy. And look, and the simplest way to look at it there is your skin is just an extension of your intestines or vice versa. The same material, collagen makes them up. You've got an immune system directly below. So they're intimately linked. But as I'll show you in a moment, there are different ways that they're linked to each other. But the critical thing in here is to convince you that if you've got gut issues or you've got skin issues, they're linked. And, and the studies are pretty clear. If you've got gut issues, then you've got an increased risk, 200%, 300% increased risk of having skin issues. And if you've got skin issues, you're increased risk of having gut issues. So it works both ways. And a classic example there is celiac disease. And celiac disease, which is a very, very unique gut illness where the person is hypersensitive to, through the allergic reaction system, to gluten, then they are at increased risk of having a dozen or so different skin reactions as well. So what links them together? You'll see that in a moment. Then you've got antibiotics. The simplest thing there is uh, one of the treat major treatments for skin conditions is antibiotics. Not applied to the face, but you take them internally and that affects the gut microbiome, which then, by the way, affects the skin microbiome and then vice versa and, and back again. So we know antibiotics. The second one is acne treatments like uh, Roaccutane and actually other treatments too have been shown to actually work via the gut, at least partly via the gut. So when they go into the gut, they're manipulated by the gut microbiome, changed, release some chemicals, change the composition of the actual original drug, and then you get the benefit or not, and of course, a lot of the side effects along with the drug as well. And then you've got no biotics. Now, no biotics means um, these are the studies on mice without any probiotics, any microorganisms in the gut. They're bred without any, and they actually, believe it or not, don't have any skin issues or have skin issues at a much lower rate when they change the circumstances. So instantly it's telling you. So I'm building up this evidence to convince you. Uh, we know another one, Helicobacter, and I've got a, an extensive program on Helicobacter. Uh, look below on, on my video channel. Please, at this time, subscribe to my channel so that I can keep providing more information to the public on gut and health and skin and all these other related issues. But Helicobacter, which is the bacteria that's found largely in the stomach, but also other places, uh, is linked with a, a, a huge incidence of urticaria, rosacea, and uh, atopic dermatitis, etc. plus another at least half a dozen skin conditions. So why would a bacteria in the gut, or how would it affect it? Then you've got candida, the same. Candida is, is primarily a gut issue, internal issue, and yet it also manifests as an, as an outside issue, thrust and so on, in lots of the moist places in between the, the toes there, the fungi on the toes. They're often coming from the gut, which is giving you a little bit of a hint there straight away. And then what's also interesting is the different skin conditions, like for example, rosacea, tend to have a particular unique microbiome. So their gut microbiome, the large intestine bacteria and fungi, primarily bacteria, tend to have a couple of unique characteristics with rosacea and the same with dermatitis. Now, this is all early, you know, early days in terms of the research, but they're showing, and they, I'm pretty convinced in 20 years' time, they'll show one or two or three species that are linked with lots of these conditions, and so we can work on that. From the other side, though, we know that if we want to treat uh, skin conditions, we can treat them through the gut. And the best example there are probiotics. Nearly all of the skin conditions that I've looked up, and I'm talking about dozens of skin conditions and hundreds and hundreds of studies out there, demonstrate that probiotics improve the gut. And then they improve the skin. And so the skin conditions, again, whether it's dermatitis or rosacea, um, it doesn't matter, alopecia, for example, has um, certain, uh, certain types of the alopecia have actually been shown to respond to probiotics as well. Then you've got prebiotics, which is a fiber. Studies show that as well. Butyrate, which is a newcomer on the block, but that's a, 
um, the chemical, the short chain fatty acid that's produced by the bacteria in the gut when they ferment fiber. So they ferment the fiber to produce the butyrate and the butyrate has been linked with improving skin conditions. And in fact, supplementing with butyrate has been shown to improve some skin conditions as well. So we've, we've got all of this building up to demonstrate that the gut is intimately linked. And the final one here is what's called a, a washed microbiome transplant or a fecal microbiome transplant that's been cleaned up. And essentially they, they take um, some uh, feces from a uh, human, they get rid of some of the nasty ones out of it, uh, and then they place implant it in a, an animal or a human. And the research there, in these poo swaps, so to speak, demonstrates that it actually lowers the rates of virtually all of these skin conditions that it's been tested on. So again, all of this shows up. So my message is very clear that let's, if we want to work on skin conditions, from aging to rosacea to blotchiness to alopecia, let's start with the gut and you'll see why. Given we know that the gut now has a big impact on skin conditions, the question is, how does it occur? Now, for some people, it might be 5%, other people, other conditions, unique circumstances, it might be 95% or even 100%. The question is, though, what are some of the underlying mechanisms that we can all address to try and fix it? So the first one is obviously fix the gut. And where this comes in is the whole beginning of this process starts off when what we've got something called gut dysbiosis. And I hope you've watched some of my other videos because I talk about gut dysbiosis all the time. And it's primarily about how the gut microbiome, the 100 million microorganisms in the large intestine and then small intestine and so on, interact with various conditions, health conditions and so on. And the fact that if they're out of balance in there, those microorganisms, the fungi, the bacteria, the protozoa, if they're out of balance, then they cause a lot of adverse effects around the body. And the skin is another one, exactly the same. In fact, the skin, and I've kind of done this little map around here to, to highlight what the skin is. There's a, a thousand bacterial species just on your skin. There's, uh, there's so far, they've isolated about 60, 60 or 70 fungal species on your skin. And so it, like your gut, is a smaller version, but it's a microbial breeding ground. And if that's good, by the way, don't panic, that's good. You actually need the bacteria in there to keep it all in balance. And your, your body feeds it and your body poisons the bad ones under good situations. And under the good situations, the good ones on your skin outcompete with the nasty ones or what we call the opportunistic ones. So it's all in balance, exactly the same as in your gut. In fact, there's a lot of similarities in there. But what we see is that when you've got this gut dysbiosis, going on, then there are various mechanisms by which it sends messages around to the body. For example, hormones, and you all know that acne and hormones are a really big issue in there. Well, the, the body produces, or the gut produces around about 30 or so hormone or hormone-like products. And I'll speak about that in a specific video I'll do on acne. But what we do know, for example, is that the estrogen in the gut can be manipulated by the gut microbiome for the good or bad, depending on what type of microbiome it is, and also how the gut manipulates what are called the phytoestrogens. They're the ones that come from the plants and how it can make it better for you and or worse. So the gut plays a big role. There's hormones in there. Then you've got your metabolic conditions, your um, um, all the nutrients and so on, the energy, the metabolism that goes on and obviously enriches the skin and or not. You've got the gut-brain axis and the gut-brain axis is, is pretty simple. But, and everyone's heard of that one in, in that the gut is linked directly via the vagus nerve and indirectly via these same mechanisms to the brain and the nervous system. And as a result, the nervous system links back in pretty well much the same way in, you know, it's a two-way street there. And what happens is that the nervous system can create circumstances in the gut, which can then create circumstances in the skin and vice versa in that little bit of a loop. And you may know that, for example, if you get really stressed, it can upset the gut microbiome. That can then cause dry skin conditions, which people can experience under stress. Circumstances like that. If you're stressed, you'll start sweating. The sweating then, you see, there's all these mechanisms that come into play. So we've got gut-brain axis, we've got microbial signals, these are a whole raft of um, chemicals that are sent out by the, the, the bacteria and the fungi. Now, some of those 
uh, good messages. So, you know, look after your skin, enrich your skin, um, have the right messages and for, for the good bacteria to grow and the good fungi to grow on the skin. So it's, it's a, you know, a, a good balance in there, or it can be the wrong messages too, the wrong type of messages being sent. Short chain fatty acids, for example, like butyrate, propionate, and acetate that are pro produced in the gut can influence the, what's happening uh, below the skin, literally, and then in the skin. And then you've got leaky gut. And leaky gut is a, a byproduct of um, gut dysbiosis, where literally the gaps between the walls would usually allow nutrients in, can let other things into big, nasty molecules, some poisons from the gut, uh, from the gut bacteria, some uh, even whole large proteins like gluten, which end up causing all these problems and, and allergens that can get through. And so leaky gut is a major outcome of a serious dysbiosis in the gut. And as a result of that, that sends messages. So when you've got that, it then it sends inflammation. And this one, inflammation is the cornerstone of all chronic illnesses. So when you've got that inflammation, that inflammation can then be sent via all these other mechanisms back to the skin and lead to inflammation in the gut. And we know that inflammation in the gut in many conditions, and I'll touch on basically here in a moment, uh, inflammation in the gut is linked to inflammation in the skin and vice versa. And again, the microbiome in the gut is influenced by the microbiome uh, or influences the microbiome in the skin and so and vice versa. And then that is all also linked to your immune response. And just like your gut, you've got your immune system directly below that one lining of cells around your gut to protect you. So does your skin have that, just directly below it. And they're in communication. They're in direct communication. So anything that's going wrong with the immune system around the gut, around the body which is talking to the gut, is probably then talking to the skin and sending messages as well. So there's all these various communication channels that open up. So as a result of that, you end up with a whole raft of skin conditions. And this, this means um, skin rashes, obviously, Wound healing is an important one. It, studies have shown that um, the addition of probiotics, no, not to the skin, but to the gut, can actually speed up wound healing. I'll go through uh, a lot more of that in detail in some of the um, case studies I'll do on these. But um, you've got blotchy skin rosacea. Now, it's interesting here. I thought I'd put this link up here because rosacea is, is a, a classic example. And they know that if you've got rosacea, you've got a much higher chance of having helicobacter pylori inflammatory bowel disease and small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. So the link with those is very, very clear. And people who have these conditions are more likely to have rosacea. It's a two way street. And then we've got acne and acne has a huge gut link, a huge gut link, um, psoriasis, dermatitis, hair loss. No, we're not talking about my hair loss. So we're talking about the patchy hair loss. Um, and also we've got up there uh, alopecia. Alopecia, um, there's a, a definitely a gut alopecia link in there as well. Um, there are different types of alopecia as well, and, and not all may have a gut link, but certainly some conditions do. Then we've got the facial hair, the growth of facial hair when you don't want it. Candida, uh, candida overgrowth thrush uh, on the skin, anywhere around the skin, whether it's um, in between the toes or in the joints or under the armpits or anything like that, has a huge link with the gut. And we all know that because that's probably the biggest source of it. And that's why with Candida, I've, I've done a whole unique video just on Candida. So make sure you watch that because it shows you how to eliminate Candida, what you can do naturally and what shows up in the scientific studies. And then we've got um, uh, wrinkles and dryness. And uh, I'll link, might as well link that in with the aging. The aging and the photo aging, again, is all linked to the gut microbiome. So if we can work on getting rid of this dysbiosis and changing this gut skin axis, this connection between the two from a, pos from a negative into a positive, and again, from the skin back to the uh, gut as well, because we want a, a, that, that positive message going back and forward, then we know that we can dramatically reduce skin conditions. Those skin conditions that play havoc with a huge percentage of the population. But the first thing you must understand that it all comes back to the link between the gut and the skin. And as a result, there are simple strategies that are posted up in many of my other videos that are down below that will show you some of the strategies that you can do to improve your 
gut and therefore your skin.